Hello and welcome. In this video, we will find out what is a set, what is an element, and how do we represent a set. Now, a set is simply a well-defined collection. So you may ask collection of what? Well, it could be collection of a name, a place, or numbers, or integers, or mountains, or rivers. It can be really anything. And what does the word well-defined mean? Well, well-defined really means what it says, well-defined. It is clearly defined, explained, and it is not ambiguous, and it is not open for interpretation. Now, let's take a look at some examples which will help us clarify this point. So let's say our first example is, what are days in a week? Now, we all know what are the days in a week. The days are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. These are days in a week. So our set consists of these things. So we will put a starting curly bracket to mark the beginning of our set, and we will put a closing curly bracket to mark the end of our set. And each of these items or objects that make up our set, we call them elements, and we separate them by comma as shown. And we represent the entire set, here this entire thing is our set, by an uppercase letter. Because these are days in a week, so let's represent them by uppercase letter D. So we say uppercase letter D represents the set of days in a week. And each one of the, each one of the days is an element that belongs to our set. Let's take a look at a second example. What are integers that are greater than 0 and less than 4? Well, we know the integers that fit this criteria. They will be the number 1, the number 2, and number 3. So these are the three integers which are greater than 0 and less than 4. So these are integers that, that belong to our set. So let's separate them by comma. And now we are going to put a starting parenthesis curly bracket and a closing curly bracket. And because these are integers, let's represent this set by uppercase letter I. So now let's take a look at a third example here, a list of friends. So this is interesting. So let's represent this collection by uppercase letter F, which will be our set, which will be equal to starting curly bracket and an ending curly bracket. Now here, my friends will be different from your friends. So let's say I have three friends and I represent each one of them by a box. So here I have three friends. Now that is I have three elements. Now you may have say four friends or ten friends or any other number of friends. Clearly my friends will be different from your friends. But for each one of us, it will be a clearly well-defined collection, right? So even though there is no absolute list of friends, but it is clearly defined who is answering the question, right? It is still well defined. So all of these are examples of a set. Now let's take a look at one final example. List of all vowels in English language. We know the vowels are A, E, I, O, U. So these are elements that belong to our set and let's separate them by comma and we'll put a starting curly bracket and an ending curly bracket to mark the beginning and ending of our set. And because these are vowels, let's say uppercase letter V represents our set, this particular set. Now, let's take a look at the question number two in a little bit more detail. So we said that one, two, and three, they are the elements of our set. And we, so we separate them by comma and we put a curly bracket like this curly parenthesis, and we said, let's call this I, right? Now, what about, say, letter 5? Is letter 5 part of our set? It is not, right? Now, so let's, um, so let's, let's uh, take a look at this particular aspect. We know that the entire set is represented by uppercase letter. What about the elements? The elements typically are represented by lowercase letter. So here we are using uppercase I. So let's use lowercase I to represent each of these elements. So what we say is that each of the elements, they belong. They belong to our set, which is I. And the way we represent this, the way we actually represent this mathematically is like this. So I belongs to uppercase I. Now this is like a funny looking symbol, which is actually known as epsilon. So it is like a uppercase I in a lowercase shape, I guess. So this is actually called as epsilon. Ep 
epsilon and it means belongs to. So we say that the number 2 here, it belongs to our set. And similarly, we say that number 5, it does not belong to our set. And one other thing is that here there are three elements, which are the number 1, number 2, and number 3. So the count of elements, we typically represent that as with a n for number of elements, and then we say bracket, and then we say our set. So here we say that our number of elements in our set i is equal to 3. So similarly, if it were the number of elements for our set, which was the days in a week, that will be 7. So let's do a quick recap of what we have seen so far. Set is a well-defined object, a collection of objects. Set is represented by uppercase letter. Each object that make up a set is called an element of the set. Element is represented by a lowercase letter. And an element belongs to a set. And the number of elements of a set A is typically represented as lowercase n within brackets the set itself.